Good day, ladies and gentlemen, Brighton here, and welcome to a look at what is probably one of the most unbelievable mods I think I've ever come across. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's called Ugo Mod. Well, not actually Ugo Mod, it's actually called Ugo Craft. I should give it its proper name. And Ugo, I believe, is a Japanese word, according to the site, and it loosely translates to motion. So that's what Ugo pretty much translates into. So... What this mod does is it gets these some blocks, as you can see there's one type of block here, and it basically has them so they can rotate and slide, and you can also have a cannon block as well. So that's what the basic mod will do. So I'm going to quickly look in this chest, and this is going to show you the basic recipe for the first block we're going to look at, and that's the rotation block, and that is the recipe for it. Plus you've got a couple of other things here, there's a one-way plate, an insulation plate, and also a control panel, which I'm probably just going to call a PDA. And that's the recipes for them. So if you see me use them, you can reverse back here, you know, rewind, whatever, and you can have a look at the recipes. But uh, yeah, the first thing I'm going to look at is, of course, the rotation block. And the whole thing about this block is you put the uh, a block on the side of one of them like that, give it a redstone signal, and as you can see, it's rotating the block. <laughs> All right, that's pretty cool. Now, if you put another block next to it, boop, Yep, it's going to rotate the blocks. That is pretty damn impressive. All right. So now we'll get back onto having a look at one of these. This is called an insulation plate. Now, things also, once, I'll just quickly show this to you. I'll just quickly start that off. If it's rotating or still doing its thing, you cannot break the blocks, as you've just seen then. You've got to wait for that to finish, and then you can break the blocks. But the thing I want to show you is this uh, insulation plate. If you've got two different engines here, which I'm going to call them engines, but these are rotation blocks, and you've got a uh, block in the middle there. If you put one of these insulation plates on it, and then you put another cobblestone or whatever block you're using, if you then activate the switch, you can see they are actually turning different ways. So basically what the insulation plate does, it stops two blocks that are generally right next to each other from connecting. So then they become separated from each other. So yeah, you can do some really awesome designs. Okay. So I'm going to break some of these off. I'll break that off as well. There is also another little pl uh, plate here. And this one is called the one-way plate. So if I quickly plunk that on there, and I drop this one on the other side, if I activate this, only one side is actually going to be activated and is only spinning while the other one stays dead still. It doesn't actually work. So interesting little, uh, interesting little thing. But uh, yeah, that's all. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if that's the full usage of the one-way plate, but... Um, you know, that's all I've been able to work out that it can really do, so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's also another thing you would have noticed, too, is these things were actually spinning independently. Well, that's what this little uh, control panel, or the uh, or the PDA, as I'm going to call it, if you right-click on one of these blocks, you can see you can actually change the settings. So you can hear you've got a max maximum acceleration, you've also got another acceleration, and you can also change the rotation of the, which direction you want to rotate. I'm going to change that onto left, quickly to show you, because when I activated this before... I'm going to quickly just uh, break that off, that one off. I'm going to put one of these insulation... Oops, wrong spot. That's not going to do much if it was on the top of it. Now, quickly just do this. So now they were both... They would have When that was set up like that before, they both spun different ways. Well, if you change the rotation of one of them, look at that. They're both spinning the same way. Of course, this one has got a faster speed, hence the reason why that one is spinning quicker. So, of course, if you wanted to... Wait for it to finish because you can't do anything while you can't interact with it while they're still active. But yeah, if you wanted to, you can simply crank up the acceleration, and it starts off slowly, but it will get a lot quicker. <laughs> that is pretty cool. And it'll just rewind itself back to where it was. That's pretty neat. And blunk. So yeah, you can have a maximum acceleration and then an acceleration to quickly see how quickly that one uh, speeds up. But there is also another little button here, and it's got plate camouflage. You can either disable or enable that. I've got to admit, I'm not entirely sure what that does. It doesn't seem to really do anything, unless, unless of course, one of you guys can actually point it out. But uh, even if you do enable it, you know, the blocks don't change. You can't really do anything with it, so I'm not entirely sure what that setting does. Uh, but these ones here, you've got special connect, and that had to happen. So turn the rain off. Uh, if you do have these special connect, as you can see, it's on dirt and stones on deny. Well, basically, if you uh, set got like your, uh, you know, like a whatever construction you want, it'll no matter if there's dirt or stone there, it will automatically just ignore those blocks, which is kind of cool. So save you worrying about having to use those insulation plates. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is a 
bit of a look at the uh, rotation block and these few plates and of course the little PDA. Now I've got this one set up just to indicate, yep, you can rotate them if you want to just have it you know, aiming down, which is pretty cool. So you don't have to be going just you know left you know sideways, you can go down. And of course we've got this big flag over here. Now I'm going to quickly put this into night time. So you can see it's nicely lit up and this is actually now this rotation block is pointing upwards underneath the flagpole. Or actually it's not, only, not only underneath the flagpole but it's underneath this whole stand as well. But the reason I want to show you this at night time is because it's nicely lit up. You activate this, yeah, the torches and even the glowstone gets disabled when it rotates. So just turn that back off and resets and the lights come back on again. So I'll quickly just make it daytime again. So yeah, you can use it to make it, as you can see, just fly up, and the, fly up and around here. Yeah, got a pretty cool little flag here if you want to make like a big checkpoint, if you had like an adventure world or something, which is very, very cool. All right, so now here's this really charming, disgusting house I've got. And of course, oh, I've got a very treacherous moat there that's only one deep, but whatever. Okay, but I can't get into the house. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to flick this lever. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. It's a drawbridge. Can you get any cooler than that? <laughs> that is so cool. Now, I will be able to walk across here, but if I walk back across it again, yeah, I'm, I'm glitching out. Unfortunately, it's like I'm actually falling into the blocks. So it's a little bit glitchy. But uh, yeah, it's uh, that is still very cool. Uh, get off there. So, to quickly close the door again, as you can see it. Again, you can adjust the speed if you just use a little PDA on the um, on the rotation block. You can make it shut and open quicker if you wanted to. <laughs> that is pretty cool. So, there you go. Check that out. Nice little drawbridge. you got to love it. <laughs> All right. And, of course, there's the little block there. So, very cool. All right. So... I mean, actually, probably, you know, I was going to say too, is if you wanted to, you probably could hook that up so you can have like a toggle switch type thing so it can close and open on both sides, but I've not done that here. But all right, so now I'm in this building, I need to get out. So, oh, okay, here's a lever here. What's this going to do? Oh my God. <laughs> Opens up the wall. So that again, that's something else you could also use for the uh, rotation block. If you wanted to, you could basically have like a big opening door. And how cool is that? <laughs> and I'll quickly just close that again so you can see it closing. And again, the torches have been uh, disabled while the blocks are uh, active like they are. So hopefully this will close. I did have it actually glitch a couple of times where the, where the doors, or the walls I should say, didn't quite come together properly. But if that happened, you just simply open it and then quickly close it again and it should be just perfectly fine. But uh, yeah, <laughs> how cool is that? That is just awesome. And I'll quickly shut the door as I'm going out. How cool is that? Is that just not impressive or what? All right, now we're gonna quickly, quickly cruise over here because now we're gonna have a look at the cannon block. Yeah, pretty cool little block. Now I'll quickly come over to this one here because this is one with a chest in it, if I can jump up. And this is the recipe for the cannon block. So there it is, just a piston, flint steel, and then just some uh, iron ingots and some redstone. Now, the cool thing about the cannon block is if you have nothing in your hand, so there you go, nothing, holding nothing, you right-click on it and you get the cannon core chamber. Now, in there, you can drop some TNT. Pretty cool. So then all you've got to do is you can just place some blocks on top. Cool. And now you can just flick the switch. And they get launched. <laughs> and, of course, they'll come straight back down and they'll land on top of where they were. And, of course, I left the switch on, so that's probably going to activate it again. <laughs> Come back down because I'm going to break that top one off and I'm going to launch myself. Yeah! Woohoo! <laughs> and the block falls quicker than I do, so that would probably hurt. That's going to go again. But uh, so I'll let that blow up. But what I'm going to do is now I'm going to quickly show you something else you can do too. Rather than just launching it straight up in the air like that, because if you make it just a nice tall tower, solid line like that, you know. It'll just blow straight up in the air and come back and land on the, on the uh, cannon. But if you make it slightly different, like that, so now it's not a perfect straight line, if you activate the switch, I'll just quickly turn that off again, because hopefully it should blow it. 
And look at that. That's launched it in the air, and that might even land on my hand. No, it won't. <laughs> and that's where it landed over there. So yeah, if you don't keep it in a perfectly straight line, it will launch it off in a totally different direction. <laughs> that is awesome. And of course, the same thing goes for this. This is a cannon again, but it's on sideways. If I put that there, since it's already activated, there you go, blows the uh, block, and there it is. It's landed on the hills just there. And I'll quickly just turn this lever off. I didn't actually mean to leave it on before. There you go, so it's, not, so it's lost its signal. So if I just sort of build this thing up a little bit, I'll probably try something like that. How's that look? That looks pretty uh, freaky. Activate the switch. And... Oops. <laughs> it actually flew further and landed on top of the hill. So, yeah, again, if you actually sort of make it a slightly different shape, it'll be the trajectory trajectory I can never say that word pro never say that word properly but uh, yeah it'll uh, go probably a lesser distance oh damn come on lose the redstone signal thank you so if I do it this way it should go even less distance than before <laughs> so you just blew it over just to there so there you go ladies and gentlemen that is a look at the cannon block all right, so now we're going to look at the last block, which is right here. And this one here is the slider block. This one is very, very cool. Uh, I'm going to quickly just show you the recipes for these. So you've got slider block here. Plus, you've also got a couple of others. These are a, a block that's or a marker block on and a marker block, which is off. Uh, so this is the recipe for the for the um, slider block, which is just there. And the recipe for the, for the on block is just some iron and a red, bit of redstone. But to get the off block, you just simply put in a marker on or the marker block on to get a marker block off. So let's go through another recipe, but I certainly can't find out what it is. But to show you the basic principle of what it actually does is, I've got this little uh, sort of slide thing going here. Now these are the markers, these are the uh, slider ones. When I activate the redstone signal, if you watch this, that's the off block. But this one here with the line is the on block. So that's just sliding along until it hits the next slider block. But if I then turn the redstone signal off, it's now the off block, the one with the square, is now targeting these slider blocks. And hence the reason why I can go back and forth like that. To uh, show it a different way, here is another little setup I've got just here. There's the off block, and this side has the on block. So if I give it a, at the moment it's off, but if I give it a redstone signal, it'll move it along, and the on block goes to each one of these slider blocks. If I turn the signal off, then the off block targets these, which is very, very cool. So I can stand on this little thing, go for a bit of, whoa, it threw me long. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. But there you go, you can basically have yourself like a little, uh, not like a little monorail type thing, a little uh, cart, whatever you want to call it, to travel yourself along. But the problem with that is, as you probably can work out, it only works along a flat area. It will not go over hills or anything like that. So if you want to set yourself up like a little train or something, then yeah, it's got to go along a flat area. But I suppose it could be pretty cool if you want to set up like a big, rather than have to have a boat along the ocean, you probably could set something up like this. <laughs> but uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is a look at the Ugo Craft, uh, yeah, Ugo Craft mod. Uh, it is very unbelievably epic. So definitely go check it out if you get a chance to. Uh, the link for it will be in the description. Uh, just one thing though, it, it can be a little bit buggy. I did get a few crashes, only a couple, but it's not that bad. And so yeah, so just be a little bit wary of that. So make sure you use a new world or back up your old one, whatever. And yeah, and also this can be used for multiplayer as well. So yeah, if you want to test it out with some of your mates or whatever else, you certainly can do so. But again, just be wary. It is very early stages of development and can be a little bit buggy. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is a look at Ugu Craft. It is unbelievably awesome. So yeah, definitely go check it out. Link will be in the description as always. And yeah, so don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that cool stuff. Until next time, as always, keep cool, keep safe, and I'll catch you around. Goodbye.